graphing rational equations. This is my last example of working through all the steps of graphing rational equations. And I wanted to put in this example because something special happens here. So reviewing the steps very quickly one more time, finding the y-intercept by plugging in 0, finding the x-intercepts by setting the whole equation or the numerator equal to 0, finding the vertical asymptotes by setting the denominator equal to 0, and finding the end behavior by using the face case and comparing the degrees of the numerator to the denominator. We plot all of those things on the graph, fill in any missing pieces, and then double check it with our graphing calculator. So let's go ahead and look at my example that I have here. f of x equals x squared minus 9 over x plus 3. At first glance, it just looks like your typical rational function, so we're going to work through all of the steps that we've done in our last few examples. Finding the y-intercept, we do that by plugging in 0, f of 0 gives me negative 9 over 3, or my intercept in reduced form is 0, negative 3. Find my x-intercepts. I do that by setting my numerator equal to 0. Move my 9 to the other side. Square root both sides, which forces in a positive and a negative. So that gives me x is equal to plus or minus 3, or an intercept format. 3, 0, and negative 3, 0. Vertical asymptotes, I do that by setting the denominator equal to 0. So x plus 3 equals 0 gives me x equals negative 3. And finding the horizontal or oblique asymptotes, I do this by looking at the degrees. The degree of my numerator is 2, and the degree of my denominator is 1. So the degree of my numerator is greater than the degree of our denominator. And if we review our face case, unfortunately, that puts us in sad face case because the numerator is greater than the denominator. So we have to long divide here. So let's put in x squared. Now I'm missing a single x term, so I'm going to put in a 0x in case I need that there to line things up, and then minus 9. And I divide that by my denominator. So first, x times what gives me x squared, and that's, of course, an x. And I multiply all of this by x. So x squared plus 3x. Subtract, which means I'm going to distribute that negative through and change all those signs. My x squareds cancel out, which is what we wanted them to do. And so this here gives me a negative 3x. Bring down my negative 9, and I repeat the process. x times what gives me a negative 3x, and that happens to be negative 3. So multiply all of this by negative 3. x times negative 3 gives me a negative 3x. 3 times negative 3 gives me a negative 9. I need to subtract, which means I distribute the negative through and switch my signs. So my three x's cancel out, which is, again, why we set it up the way we did. And our nines actually cancel out. No big deal. We don't care about the remainder. We only care about the quotient because that is where our oblique asymptote is going to be. So we're going to plot all of this information on the graph. 0, negative 3 is my y-intercept. 3, 0, negative 3, 0 is my x-intercept a vertical asymptote of x equals negative 3, and my oblique asymptote of y equals x minus 3. So my y-intercept of 0, negative 3, my x-intercept of positive 3, 0, and negative 3, 0, a vertical asymptote at negative 3, and my oblique asymptote of y equals x minus 3. Remember, you graph that just like you do any line. So you have a y-intercept of negative 3, and my slope goes up 1 over 1. So there is my oblique asymptote. So still at this point, 
you might not even realize something is going wrong. Something special is happening in this case, but you definitely should. And the reason that we might not realize it is because it doesn't happen very often. So let's go back and let's review what's the problem in this instance. So if we go back and review all of the information that we know about vertical asymptotes, it all goes back to this key element here. A graph absolutely cannot cross a vertical asymptote. The reason is because that is where our function is undefined. So I can't have a graph cross something where it's not defined. That just doesn't make any sense. So if I go back and I look at the sketch of my graph, Notice I have a vertical asymptote, and notice I also have a point on that vertical asymptote, meaning my graph would have to cross that asymptote to go through that point. So if you ever have a vertical asymptote and a point all at the same time, then something is going wrong. Well, I encourage you to go back and look at this example in a little bit more detail. x squared minus 9 over x plus 3. Now this is in non-factored or expanded form. Well, let's see what happens if we put it in factored form. So the top is a difference of squares. It factors into x plus 3, x minus 3. And the bottom is just x plus 3. But let me put parentheses around it to join it together. Now notice I have an x plus 3 over an x plus 3. So this is really like saying these x plus 3s cancel out. Almost. There's a trick to it. So the x plus 3s kind of cancel out, which is why I'm doing an approximately here, this x minus 3. So I really don't even have a rational function anymore. I now just have a polynomial. So some of this information is going to stay the same, and some of it is going to disappear. Okay. So let's go back and let's review it. My y-intercept is still going to intercept at negative 3. So that one is still going to stay the same. My x-intercept is when I set this equal to 0. Well, if I do that, that only gives me the positive 3, 0, and that eliminates this negative 3, 0. Vertical asymptotes are when my denominator equals to 0. Well, if I have this function here, I no longer have a denominator. So I no longer have any vertical asymptotes whatsoever. Again, horizontal and oblique asymptotes, that only applies to a rational equation. If I look at this thing here again, I no longer have a rational equation. So this here does not apply. But notice what I came up with as an oblique asymptote, y equals x minus 3. That is the same thing that we found cancels out, with the exception. Remember, this is approximately. There's one trick involved to this. So if I go back and I sketch the graph of this, again, my x-intercept of negative 3, 0, and my vertical asymptote at negative 3 cancels out. So I no longer have these two things intercepting each other. So I can actually eliminate them from the graph with one trick. If you ever have a vertical asymptote and an intercept connecting each other, that's actually going to create a hole in my graph at that point. Okay. So I really have my graph drawn here of y equals x minus 3, because we said that's pretty much what it reduces down to, but I have a hole here. So I'm going to go ahead and graph my line here of y equals x minus 3. It's no longer my asymptote, but it's actually my final answer. But again, where my vertical asymptote and my x-intercept connected is going to create a hole in my graph. So I have a hole in my graph at x equals negative 3. And the reason is, is because that's happening where this function is undefined. If I were to plug in negative 3, Notice my denominator would become 0, and that would give me something undefined. So I can't actually plug in negative 3 into this graph. So they cancel out, and they create a void or a hole in my graph at that point. So I'm going to get rid of this. I no longer need that. That's not part of my answer anymore. Okay, But I do have a hole in my graph right there. 
Now, let's double check this with the graphing calculator. So the first thing that I need to do is plug in my equation and make sure you plug in the original equation with parentheses around the numerator and the denominator. So x squared minus 9 divided by x plus 3. Graphing it on my standard window of zoom 6, notice it just gives you that line looking thing there. And notice it doesn't say anything special about the hole that I've so much talked about yet in this video. But this is another reason that you should be following these steps by hand first and checking with your calculator second. If this is the final answer that you put on your graph, I would count it incorrect because I wanted to see that hole on the graph. Now, there's a way that we can pinpoint the hole in the graph here, and we do that by looking at specific ordered pairs. And I can do that by using a feature on the calculator. So the feature that I'm going to use is under the calc. So I'm going to do second and trace. And I want to look at a specific value, what happens when I enter in a specific x value. So I can hit 1 or I can hit enter. What I want to know is what's happening when we enter in the value of negative 3. So notice down here in my bottom left it has x equals. So I just type in the specific value that I'm looking for of negative 3, and if I hit enter, it gives me a blank here for my y value. That is because there is no specific y value that fits with this specific x value here. So this double checks that there is a hole in the graph at x equals negative 3. Your graph does not actually connect between the left and the right there. Now you can do this to double check any ordered pair, and so let's just check another ordered pair. Let's just check our y-intercept. So I can do second calc value, and I can type in my zero value, and notice it gives me negative 3, and it tells me exactly where that is. So that confirms that I have my correct y-intercept. So comparing it with the graph that I've drawn with the hole in it, that tells me that I have the correct answer. And that finishes up a special case of when we have holes in our graph, and that finishes up the whole sequence of graphing rational functions.